In this video, we are going to talk about the crucial roles of a project manager. But moreover, we'll talk about the responsibilities of a PM so that you don't mix them up together. Why it's important? First of all, you'll encounter a lot of questions about the role of a project manager on the job interviews. But also, if you act as a PM already, you need to ensure that you fulfill all the responsibilities and you act as a great project manager. Let's dive in. Hello, I'm Dmitry Nizhbetsky from Project Management Basics, and I help people like you to become a PM from any role that you are currently at. So if you want to become a project manager, subscribe to this channel now. Before we dive in into the roles and the responsibilities of a PM, we need to clearly define who is a PM. The project manager is the person assigned by the performing organization to lead the team that is responsible for achieving the project objectives. First of all, I want you to notice one little thing here, that a project manager is a leader, first of all. Then you should notice that this definition says nothing about exact processes, tools, methodologies or frameworks you need to use. It says nothing about the certifications a project manager should have and it says nothing about the complexity of a project. Therefore, there is a huge variety of possible project management approaches and it's your responsibility to select the most appropriate for the nature of your given project. That's exactly why it is important that you take on the common roles of a project manager and you bear the common responsibilities of a PM. So, but what's the difference between roles and responsibilities? A role is a function or model of a behavior that you must follow. For example, the role of a facilitator. Well, a responsibility is something that your job description or duty prescribes you to do. For example, you are responsible to report progress to the project stakeholders. So, as you see from definition, the role is your model of behavior. So, how should a project manager behave? First comes the role of integrator. Project integration management is almost the only reason why we need project managers at all. You see, processes, tools and people do not work seamlessly well together to achieve the project goal. There should be someone who will always fix the system, who will grease the wheels, who will get things done, who will connect people from different departments, from different knowledge domains. So you as a project manager should always find opportunities to improve this workflow from initiating a project to getting it to a successful end. There are several levels where you can integrate a project. First on objective level, then on tools and processes level, then on stakeholder level and in environmental level of your company. It goes without saying that you need some skills and knowledge to do the integration of a project. That is why it's so critical that you as a project manager continuously improve your tool set. You learn new processes, new techniques, new tools, new methodologies and you apply them throughout your project management approach. Okay, project integration management is a huge knowledge domain and it's beyond this video. So we are moving on to the second role of a project manager. Well, as for me, the next major role of a project manager is facilitator. Here's why. Put an engineer, a graphic designer and business analyst in one room and ask them to provide a solution for a project and leave. I can guarantee that they will not be able to come up with any reasonable options. Most likely they will provide you golden solutions, but they all will be out of context and beyond the business case of the project. However, if you facilitate their work, if you give them direction, if you keep them to one goal, then most likely you will get the most optimal solution from this team. You see, majority of people have hard time keeping to one single goal. Moreover, it's hard for them to work always in the context of a project. They want to do everything in the best possible way. They want to feel great self-esteem. They want to be proud of their work. But you as a project manager has constraints of time, money and resources. And moreover, you need to deliver what clients want, not what the project team wants. On the other hand, your team members and stakeholders do not have the proficiency to build quick relationships at work, to resolve conflicts and so on. 
They have different priorities from different bosses. You should facilitate their interactions, which means you should make them easier and faster for them. Otherwise, they will procrastinate and do what they feel comfortable for them to do. Okay, moving on. And the next major role of a project manager is communicator. The official statistics of Project Management Institute says that a project manager on a successful project communicates 90% of time. It's not far away from my personal experience working on a big project. Just imagine you have dozens or hundreds of external stakeholders who try to communicate with your project team. They provide priorities, requirements and assign tasks to them. And from the other side there is you with your project plan, with your priorities, with your assignments and so on. It will create a mess. Therefore, you want to be the main point of communication, but even more you want to be a proactive point of communication. You shouldn't be just distributing the information from clients to the project team and from project team to the client. You need to proactively initiate communication on the pain points of the project, on the risks, on the problems that arise day in and day out. What's more critical, there will be conflicts on a project that everyone will try to avoid. And you need to proactively initiate communication to collaborate on these problems and resolve them. So this leads us to the next role of a project manager, which is the problem solver. You need to develop a habit to be on a lookout for problems and develop a desire to resolve them actively for other people. Don't expect that your project team will resolve all the conflicts, all the problems on the project on their own. Keep in mind that there will be always problems that fall into the boundaries between the responsibilities of different people. There will be problems that have no assigned responsibilities for. Moreover, there will be problems that others will not be able to resolve. They won't have authority, they won't have skills or knowledge to do that. But you won't be able to describe all the possible scenarios, so you should be acting like a person who wants and needs to resolve all the problems. This gets us as close as possible to the cornerstone role of a project manager. But unfortunately, I don't have a one or two words to define it, so it goes as you should act as the most responsible person on a project. If you want, you are the bearer of ultimate responsibility. It means just that you are responsible for everything what happens on a project. Every failure, every problem, you are responsible for it. Delays, additional expenses, conflicts within team, unhappy clients, poor work of vendors. It's all your responsibility. You should plan your project taking into account all possible aspects and all the risks that might happen. That's why it's essential that you bear the ultimate responsibility for a project. And the best mindset to do that is to feel like you are the president of your small company, your project, and you are sexually spending your money, your product is at stake and your business will benefit from everything that you do on a project. This way you will do everything in the best possible way and you won't let the responsibility slip through the cracks. Every industry and every company will give you additional roles to the roles of a project manager. There is no way I can describe them all in one video, but I will show you one bonus example. In many industries, companies start to apply agile project management where a project manager combines with the role of a scrum master. A scrum master has the patterns of behavior on his own, like he is a facilitator, but on the other hand, he is a servant leader. And it adds a bit complexity for you. On one hand, you should be a servant leader and you shouldn't impact the decisions of the team. You should help them to do their work. On the other hand, you should keep to the project goals and you should drive all stakeholders and the team to get to that goal, which is a bit authoritative. So as you can see, there might be different roles that require different patterns of behavior and you need to balance them out. Finally, we are getting into the responsibilities of a project manager. These are your job description bullet points, policies and processes of the company you're working and the expectations of your leadership. And the number one responsibility of a PM is to identify and keep to the project goals. Here's how it goes. You as a PM has an authority to spend resources, money and allocate people 
to reach the project objectives. It goes without saying that you shouldn't spend these resources on anything that doesn't support the goal. Therefore, if this project goal is not clearly defined, there is no way you can efficiently spend these resources. Likewise, customers and clients may change these goals in the process of the project. If they do it too often, you may spend millions but don't produce the desired value. Here's a truth from real world. A lot of clients and customers from small businesses especially don't know what's the goal of a project. They don't understand what they want to achieve with it. Likewise, they don't do the financial project justification. Therefore, it's your goal at least at some level to help them identify this project goal. Okay, the next set of responsibilities sit under one umbrella. It is called you're responsible to increase chances for project success. So what does it mean? First of all, you need to plan a project. So if you want to increase the chances for success for a project, you need to mentally simulate the whole life cycle. You need to identify the main challenges of these projects and how you will tackle them. Then you need to ensure that the goals of a project are feasible. You need to provide the budget, the timeline, the scope of the project and see if it fits into the initial constraints. If not, you need to adjust something to make the project feasible, otherwise you need to cancel it at all. One thing that many project managers don't understand is that only by comparing uh, the progress of a project to the initial plan, you can say whether you are moving towards the project goal or not, or whether you deviated from it and moving into another direction. Just keep in mind that it's not only about the schedule delays or going over budget. You might be doing some work that's completely in different direction, that doesn't support the goal of a project. Okay, the next part is execution of the project plan. Here the difference, I didn't say execution of the project, I say you need to execute the plan that you provided to your clients. That is why it's so important to get the buy-in from your project team and stakeholders on your realistic plan. That is why it's important to motivate team to use the processes and tools that you selected for this project. Otherwise, you won't be able to control it, you won't be able to compare your initial plan with the actual project status because it will be completely different entities. And this leads us to your responsibility to control the execution of the project. Remember that you have an authority to spend money, time and resources and sometimes reputation of the business to achieve project goals. During the whole project, you need to prove that you are spending all of these to reach the objective. That is why you are responsible to provide status updates on the project, where the money goes, how much you deviated from the initial plan, what were the additional costs or delays. Okay, last but not least, and I believe it's a cornerstone responsibility for a project manager, you need to continuously improve and you need to do it on several levels. You need to develop your personal skills, you need to improve your professional skills, you need to improve the processes in the company you work in, you need to improve interactions with your clients. And also you need to improve the project management as a whole. So there is a lot of work here, but a lot of project managers forget about this piece, so they don't collect lessons learned, they don't try to improve the processes that they use throughout decades of the company's history. Okay, there are a lot of responsibilities that no one talks about. For example, like a responsibility to act in a professional and ethical way. Many companies do not have the code of conduct, so project managers act as they see fit. There are obvious things like conflicts of interest, breaking the law, taking bribes and so on. However, there are a lot of subtle things that will put you in the zone of an unprofessional or unethical behavior. I have a link below that will help you to understand the boundaries of professional and ethical behavior. Do check it after this video. Then you are also responsible to develop your people. You need to develop them in terms of project management, their soft skills, their interactions with one another, their skills in resolving conflicts and so on. It takes huge amounts of time, so at least try to arrange some trainings for them, do the trainings yourself and work one-on-one -on -one with your key team members. And one more critical thing, you need to keep your team motivated and not just to finish your project successfully. When you finish your project, you may need to release the whole team and 
all team members will go to different projects under different project managers. And if you squeeze a lot of juice out of them and they go demotivated, you will do a bad favor for another project manager who will need to deal with demotivated and tired person. Moreover, you may put that other project into a risk that this person will leave the company and suddenly they will have to find a substitution. So think beyond your project. You have responsibilities towards other project managers in this organization. What role can you cover the best? Are you an integrator, a communicator, a facilitator? Or you bear responsibilities like a pro? Maybe you solve the problems. So just give me an answer in the comments below. Thank you. If you like this video and you want to become a project manager, subscribe to this channel. See you soon!